شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back with the Quran in the month of Ramadan In this video we are looking at one of my favorite chapters in the Quran Surah Yusuf It's a chapter that every Muslim should read and every story that every child should know about If your child doesn't know about the story of Yusuf then start teaching them about the story of Yusuf and there's some excellent resources that are available that you can uh, undertake and read with your child to teach them about the story of Yusuf and there's so much that one can glean and learn and gain strength from in the story of Yusuf he was someone who was blessed with immense beauty beauty is part of our religion Ihsan beauty we built beautiful buildings beautiful mosques beautiful architecture and we should continue doing this in our countries here as well and you know if you think about the Cambridge mosque in Cambridge the eco mosque what a wonderful structure uh, what a wonderful piece of architecture something that attracts uh, Muslims and non-Muslims alike and we should think deeply about our homes the places we live and work in the places we visit about making them beautiful locations as well so Muslims are always about beauty and in previous videos we also talk about uh, love love of good clothing dressing well eating well as well uh, we also learn about patience his father Yaqub Jacob who was tested a number of times after losing his beloved son and he remained patient upon this and the beauty of patience is that Allah will never forsake you Allah will always give you something better in return for your patience this is the beautiful patience we learn from the story of Yusuf. It's radical in our age because we all want things quickly and patience doesn't really suit the modern person. But actually the Quran reminds us that patience is a uh, virtue. But we also learn that despite everything happened with what happened to Yusuf السلام, the betrayal, uh, the loss, the loss of dignity, imprisonment, he forgave people. And that really is a prophetic quality that we should bring into our lives all the time. That we should be, our hearts should be big enough to forgive people. And I also believe that that was also something that was the inner beauty of Joseph, Yusuf. We look about, we talk about the outer beauty, but the inner beauty is to have the big heart. To be able to forgive, وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَسْفَحُوا To forgive, to overlook and to, um, and to um, turn our heart into a, a place of forgiveness for other people but Yusuf السلام, was also given uh, tested temptation was brought before him but he remained patient he was accused of things but he remained patient and as Muslims we are reminded that we should never accuse people without evidence it's haram in our religion to talk about uh, things that we don't have knowledge of sometimes rumors spread and people are very quickly to forward them on their whatsapp Allah reminds us that we should do tabayyun, we should affirm, we should find out the truth of the matter as well. But this world is filled with temptation. In the month of Ramadan, I guess we are somewhat shielded. But if we only look around us, there are temptations everywhere. I sometimes joke with my uh, daughters when we travel through the airport, as you are aware, once you go through security, you know, you have to walk through a shop uh, as you uh, make your way to the plane. And I said to my daughters, this is like a really good metaphor of the dunya, that you're trying to get to a destination, and along your destination, there's all these tempt temptations, duty free this, duty free that, buy this, buy that. And so the world is like that, but we need to remain focused. But also very, very important, I think many Muslims lose sight of this, is that engaging in civil struggles, in politics, in siyasa, is very much central to Islam. Right? Many people like to secularize. This is like a self-secularization that we brought into our religion where we just think that Islam is just about ibadat. And we don't read the books which are mostly about mu'amalat, interactions, mu'asharat, how do we live with one another. If you think about the book of fiqh, ibadat, things to do with acts of worship are a small component. When you think about the rest of fiqh, a lot of it is about how we live in the world today. And so Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, um, was someone who engaged in politics of his time. It wasn't his politics. It wasn't a world of his making. 
but he saw the greater good because he knew that the people of Egypt are going to be tested with a calamity uh, of drought and severe shortages. So he stood up and he showed bravery. And that doesn't refute this idea or go against the idea of humility, right? Ij'alni ala khaza'inil ard, he said. Make me someone who will become the treasurer because I'm the best person trained for this. So if a person really believes that they have the right skill set and they're able to do that, then they should uh, fearlessly go and deliver on that type. It's different when someone is uh, woefully inadequate, woefully underqualified and he makes himself someone who wants to lead. That's different. But when you're seeing a clear and present danger and you know that you have the skill set, then you're only a fool if you were to say, oh, well, I don't want to do that because I want to become humble. No, one person should show a leader when it's required. Leadership is also about showing leadership when it's absolutely required. And it's worth remembering that he engaged in the politics of non-Muslims, right? Uh, a lot of people think today that Muslims should just sit quietly and not do anything. No, if you look at the example of Yusuf Islam, he was aware of the political realities that were ensuing around him and he engaged in that. And of course, that's very, very difficult for Muslims sometimes today because then you have to make some difficult choices living uh, in, in, in these lands which are not Darul Islam, which are not the countries of Islam. Uh, and Muslims sometimes have to make difficult choices and negotiations around uh, what decisions they're going to do. And it's easy for someone like me who's an armchair critic, who has the luxury of reading books every day, who doesn't have to engage as much to criticize other Muslims who are trying to serve wider society. And we should be careful and we should be a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more empathetic towards those Muslims who are trying their best to engage with wider society. And I mentioned before that we should be very careful and judicious about looking at their intentions and motives. That's very, very dangerous. Once you start looking at people's intentions and motives, then you're really going down a slippery slope because then you'll start making accusations about their faith and their, and their belief and so forth and so on. So we should be very careful about that as well. We mentioned before that the blood, the honor of a Muslim is more sacred than the Kaaba itself. That's very, very important. This dignity that a Muslim has in the eyes of Allah, irrespective of what they do or whether we agree with it or not. So we should have the openness in, of our heart to look at the good in people, uh, to think critically about how we engage with wider society as well, as, especially as our population is increasing in places like Britain. Many of us, mashallah, are involved in many fields, many, uh, many types of jobs, uh, playing important roles in these companies and organizations. It's important that we engage with the ulama who understand uh, the challenges that we're facing and allow us to think about and engage with the world in a way that allows us to fulfill our objectives but also promote the interests of our deen, but also the welfare of society broadly as well. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.